someone from Europe sent me a mail about three months ago saying, give me a mantra. So I said, there's no mantra to give here. It is the understanding. My own teacher never gave mantras. His teacher did to some who were inclined to do mantra jap, but here it is the understanding which becomes the mantra because it becomes lived as one's experience. But he kept insisting, <laughs> he said, give me a mantra, every email give me a mantra. So I said, all right. No soham, hamsa, nothing. I said, the mantra I have to give you is, don't be silly. I said, whenever during the course of the day, a thought comes of blaming someone, tell yourself, don't be silly. When the thought comes of blaming yourself, tell yourself, don't be silly. When you want to condemn someone, tell yourself, don't be silly. And you will be surprised as to how many times a day you will start chanting this mantra. Because you will realize automatically that everyone says, thinks, feels, hears based on their genetics, their conditioning and how God has made them. So all these thoughts which used to come up earlier, you realize when you keep looking at things, you know, that my God, what am I doing inside here? I'm blaming someone for something they are supposed to have done. And first he thought I was joking, but he said, not that he has to chant it, but the thought keeps coming up now, you know, whenever the mind goes into a certain pathway, immediately the involvement snaps. And the idea of a mantra is to cut off the involvement. Freeing the mind, mantra, which is freeing the thinking mind. The traditional mantras with the breath, the in-breath and out-breath, the task was the same. Because the focus is shifting to the breath. But what are we repeating throughout the day in our minds? This becomes a torch which now shines light on what's happening inside the mind. More like a floodlight than a torch. And then you realize that so much of your mind has freed up now from all that unnecessary thinking. <laughs> 